How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another JJR view. And today we're going to be going back a little bit to my roots um, again, back to probably the very beginning. I love cat stuff, and this is a gotcha. And if you're new to my channel, gotchas are kind of like gambling. You have a certain amount of things that you're able to get that is usually on the side, and you're not sure which one you will. So you kind of gamble and hope that you get the one that you want. And uh, looking at this box, there are a lot of different ones that I would like to get. And this is called Nyan Nyan Nyanko. It's very cute and it's very, uh, I guess you could say, kawaii. And then uh, on the side it says, Collect them all, one of eight chances of each. Chocolate banana cake, apple pie, matcha cake, and orange cake. And if we zoom in right here, they have some really cute designs. I really like the orange cake cat. The chocolate one's pretty cute too, but I really like in that orange one. Let's go ahead and turn it around a little bit. That's what the front looks like up close. And then on this side, oh, I really like that fruit tart cat, but this one out of all of them I've seen, this is my favorite, the Fruit Roll Cake Cat. Very cute. And then at the bottom, we rotate around. This is another thing by San X. And if you've been following me for a while, they're the same people that do the Sumiko Garashi gotchas as well. So I'm excited to see the quality of this and see how cute it is. So let's go ahead and open it up. And without further ado, let's zoom in and see what we got. Dun, dun, dun. And, oh yeah. I got the favorite one that I wanted on this side of the box. The Orange Cake Cat. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him real quick. Look how cute he is. Super soft material. And then we have some stitching on the side to make it look like little decorations. The top has some patch style orange slices. We have the same kind of thing on the other side. But yeah, this cat's face is super cute. And I'm really excited to uh, give it to my fiance because I really think that she'll enjoy either hanging it in the car on her little mirror or uh, attaching it to her keychain. But this thing's really nice and it's very squishy as well. Feels like it has a little bit of weighted uh, beans at the bottom right here. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can kind of pinch them right there between your fingers. But uh, yeah, I really like this, and uh, I'm happy that I got the one that I wanted on that side. I was actually really surprised. Usually you just get uh, whatever one. <laughs> but yeah. Dig Dug, the tunnel digging pump action game from 1982. Now a classic among many others of its time, Dig Dug still stands out to me for its challenging gameplay and unique mechanics. So let's take a closer look at this pint-sized version of a classic retro game. How's it going guys? And welcome back to another JHR review. Today we're going to be looking at a Dig Dug My Arcade Micro Player. This is a miniature arcade cabinet. And basically, it holds the game Dig Dug, which is a classic retro game that I played when I was about, I'd say, eight years old. But it's really cute and really interesting the way that they kind of compacted everything into this. It actually has a color screen and functional buttons. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this and test it out. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on its side and then rotate it around the back. And then right here we can just pop off the back side of it. Comes off pretty easily. The first thing we're greeted with is a Dig Dug Microplayer Retro Arcade User Guide. 
And then the inside of the packaging. Looks as though this was holding it up so it's starting to fall out. Move that out of the way. And then we'll just slide the system out like this. There we go. Now we got this out of its package. It looks really nice. The arcade cabinet is really cute. The design and the plastic is surprisingly sturdy too. Um, I, I just, I can't get over how miniature this is. It's about the size of my hand, which is insane. But let's go ahead and zoom in here real quick. Move it to the side. As you can see, if we zoom in, we have a joystick, a pump button, reset, and start button. And you can actually unscrew this little joystick if you wanted to and use this as a traditional D-pad as you would on a console controller. But if we peel this off right here, I'd love to be able to modify this with a Raspberry Pi. It's the perfect form factor, and I think that it would look really, really nice being able to play a multitude of different games. And this is technically a 360 joystick, but I don't know if I could incorporate it good enough for maybe Nintendo 64 emulation. If you guys want to see me try something like that, let me know in the comments below. But outside of this really nice design, it comes with an actual color LCD, I think TFT display. And if we look at the back right here, there's actually a space not only for a battery slot, but also a micro USB. So if you don't want to power it with its, I believe, four AA batteries, all you have to do is plug in a micro USB and put it into your PC and or your phone charger and you're good to go to play this pretty much anywhere if you have a 5 volt input. Alright. Browsing the side right here, we have some nice interesting designs. Looks as though this is the character design if it wasn't within the 8-bit range. Very cute. I always thought that he was wearing goggles though for some reason. Or maybe he is, it's just not in this depiction. Moving to the front, this is actually the power button you press on in order to turn it on. And then on the side it gives the same kind of artistic depiction of the video game characters. So let's go ahead and zoom back in on this, and I'm going to take a small break and grab a micro USB and start this game up. Get excited. All right, now I grab myself a nice long micro USB. I use this for my PS4 controller. I think it's about 10 feet. Now we can just move this over here to the back side and simply plug it in. I believe it's the upwards way like this. There we go. And now that we plugged it in, let's go ahead and rotate this in this direction so we have a nice view on it and zoom in and focus and with a little bit of uh, press of a button right here we have a light which is really cool at the bottom but most importantly we have Dig Dug and this is really cool let's go ahead and dim the lights and play a little bit of the game alright now we have the game up we just need to press start And it starts up. And that is the game. So basically it is a game where you need to be very strategic after a few levels and you need to make sure that you kill these guys with your pump 
um, sometimes in a certain order, and it gets really strategic because you need to maybe drop a rock on three or four, four of them at a time, and uh, it gets very complicated. I don't think I've made it past maybe five or six levels, and I believe there's 12 levels in all. But this is a very, very nice miniature little system, and I really like the way that you can just press on the coin slot, and it just starts up. It is such a really unique idea, and normally I would say, yeah, you can emulate a game like this on your phone, but having this kind of premium feel to this nice arcade machine, uh, it's very nice aesthetic, and you can definitely put this on your desk at work, or maybe, uh, I don't know, bring it with you to school or something. This will be a very good talking point. What do you guys think? I think that this is... Uh, kind of uh, a novelty, but also something that's really unique and it has functionality, so it's not a complete waste of space as if you just got something that's, you know, a paperweight. But yeah, today we're going to be looking at a pair of Daiso Color Combo headphones. They are brown and blue, and I get a lot of interesting items from Daiso. And if you've been around for my channel, uh, or been on my channel a long time, you know that Daiso is a Japanese store that I have here in California, and I believe they're in many other states as well. But you're able to find a lot of really interesting kind of cheaper items, and I believe these were only $5, or something around that. So basically what we're going to do is see if these cheap headphones have good sound quality or not. One thing I really like about them already is the kind of retro kind of brown and blue design. I really like how they look. They're kind of like a out-of-the-box kind of coloring pattern. I don't really see any other headphones having this kind of color pattern. But let's go ahead and zoom in on the box at the bottom right here. It says it has a 3.5 millimeter plug on the ear cups. Super bass. And it says there's cables coming out of both sides. And then if we zoom in on the back, we'll see. There's probably pretty much all of that same information and a lot of lettering in Japanese that I cannot read yet. Maybe eventually. But yeah, let's go ahead and remove this sticker, open these up, and take a closer look. Alright, I went ahead and removed the sticker. Now let's just go ahead and bend this back a little bit. And it looks like it comes on a little thin plastic encasing. Go ahead and slide it out. So these are what the headphones look like. It's unfortunate, it looks like they're already scratched up somehow, even though I just pulled them out of the packaging. I'm not sure how that happened. I was thinking that there might have been something that I could have uh, peeled off or something, but that's actually not too great. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. I'm sure that this might come off with a little bit of scrubbing maybe, but it definitely looks like these might have already been used somehow. I'm not too sure if someone returned these and they just reshelved them or they just are not manufactured well. But let's go ahead and turn them around. Very interesting design in here. The fabric is a little bit loose though. I'm being kind of critical with these given the price that they are. And uh, you can tell that the quality of the, uh, you know, putting together portion wasn't done that well. Um, it does have a swivel right here, which is really nice. Some even larger companies and uh, whatnot don't add that extra swivel for people. And uh, some people, like my fiance, have migraine issues, so that extra bit of leeway and less pressure on the head can definitely help stuff like that. This isn't too bad of a uh, comfort thing. It's a little stiff, but um, I've actually felt quite worse. But we're not really looking too much at the build quality versus the sound quality, because if you're getting a $5 pair of headphones, you're definitely going to be probably looking to just find something cheap to use in the meantime, not as your daily driver. 
But yeah, let's go ahead and plug these in using the blue jack that it comes with and see what kind of sound we can get out of these. Maybe I'll be surprised. Now, as per usual, I've loaded up some no copyright music and I'm just gonna go ahead and plug the headphones into the bottom of here. Went in pretty easily. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this down, click play and bring them to my ears. Let's also adjust that volume a bit. All the way up. Hmm. Alright guys, and now I'm going to put this up to the microphone so you guys can hear a little bit. Uh, let's see. So, I'm going to give my blunt, honest opinion because I'm not going to lie to you guys. These things are, they're pretty terrible. Um... I wouldn't have bashed them as hard, um, but when I went to put them on, the actual mechanism for adjusting it is so incredibly stiff. If you look in right here, it's just a piece of plastic going into other grooves of hard plastic. So it's not like, look at that, it's just skipping through here. It's a pretty terrible adjustment. And uh, finally, the sound quality. I'd say the sound quality is about a. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be generous and say it's a good, maybe four out of ten, maybe a three point five, but it lacks the equalness between the treble and the bass. It kind of feels like it's too trebly, if you know what I mean. Kind of like a pair of cheap earbuds that you'd get at a gas station. But the look is really nice. And let's say you wanted to use these for like a costume or something, or maybe like a retro night at some place. I think that they could fit a outfit like that. What do you guys think? Kind of a novelty headset. Wasn't expecting a whole lot from them, but uh, still interesting nonetheless. Today we're gonna be looking at this really cute cat humidifier. It's kind of like a bigger version of that skinny one that I did a few videos ago. And this one is also by Daiso Japan. If we take a closer look, you can see it's a ceramic cat on a tiny little plate right here. And if we zoom in, we'll be able to see that design a little bit better. I think it's really cute. It's a very interesting idea. And uh, I believe it would be 300 yen. And if we go to the top right here, we can zoom in as well. Right here it says gradual humidification, batteries not needed, and just add water. And this was $4, so it wasn't too expensive. The side right here just gives the same messages. And the bottom is blank. And then the back right here is just some stuff uh, on how to clean, how to use in store. But we're not going to really be looking at that. Focusing right here on the back, we see it has a little sticker. Let's go ahead and remove that so we can open the box. Comes off pretty easy. And then we can just pop this off like this. There we go. Opening up the top, we notice it's wrapped in a nice little thing of plastic to keep it safe along with a little shock absorber, it looks like. Let's go ahead and remove the plastic from the outside. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it. Looking at it, it seems as though it uh, is almost hand-painted in a way. Probably uh, is. Very neat. It's like a kind of ceramic. I mean, it says it was ceramic, but it feels very kind of like pottery. As you can hear it when I'm moving it in my hands. 
Most of the brush strokes are nice, some of them are a little thin, but it looks cute nevertheless. Let's go ahead and remove the rest of the stuff from here. We get a little plate right here that the cat goes on top of. Let's set that down and zoom in on it. The thing that I am extremely confused by, and uh, I don't know if it's just me, it says that it's a humidifier, but how does it humidify if there's no electricity? Is it just me, or is there some kind of chemical reaction that goes on in here? I'm not too sure if it if it if it's just me or not. I'm gonna take a look at the back. It says add clean tap water about halfway. And that's it. I have no idea how this is supposed to work scientifically, but I'm gonna get some water and fill it up and see what's going on. All right, I went ahead and added some water in here. I'm gonna move this out of my setup area because my new setup right here is just paper, so I don't wanna ruin it. There we go, I went ahead and filled it up halfway. Zoom in on it. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be expecting here. I need to take a look at this box again. It obviously shows at the top there's supposed to be something coming out of it, right? But I'm confused. So it says it's for gradual humidification. I'm not sure if that means that it just the water evaporates over time, and that's supposed to be considered its humidification. But rather than considering this a total loss, because in my opinion, I, I have no idea the benefits of something so slow, maybe it's for plants or something, um, it's still really adorable, and you could put pencils in it, or uh, some kind of little knickknacks, or you know, put some things in there you want to store. And it comes on a cute little plate too, which also could be used for other multiple purposes. So I wouldn't consider this a total loss. I just, I don't see like they have on the diagram on the back right here, any kind of poofing hum humidity coming from it. And I don't really know how that would work. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I know this video has just been me being relatively confused, but you know, I just don't see how it's supposed to work. But yeah, <laughs> let me know in the comments below what I'm missing. And today we're going to be looking at this metallic sheet gum. Now this is going to be a metallic sheet with Dragon Ball Super art on it. It's a gotcha, but it also has a piece of bubble gum inside of here as well. And just to make sure we have a little bit more mystery, I actually picked up two of these guys, so we're going to be able to see whether or not we can get two separate pictures in this. So uh, I'm excited because I really like Dragon Ball Super. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right, and now let's go ahead and see which one we got. Oh, look at this. This is uh, Goku and Vegeta. And this is actually the fusion between both of them. How cool is that? Let's kind of move it around a little bit. Let's zoom in on it. You can really see the reflectivity in it. It's all really nice and shiny. I'm not sure if this is a sticker, though. I don't think that it is. No, it's not. But it's completely reflective on the back. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Yeah, the art's pretty nice. Really like the sheen. It's kind of like a holographic kind of like Pokemon card almost. What do you guys think? Pretty cool. And then let's go ahead and finish dumping this out. Zoom in on it. And this is the gum. 
I wonder if it's going to taste like that other gum I tried in the past that was from a different Dragon Ball Z art pack. Just kind of like a square. Let's go ahead and see. Hmm. It kind of tastes like um, a little bit fruity. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's really good. Move that out of the way. And then here we go. We have the identical one if we zoom in real quick. And uh, I really like the colorful packaging too. I don't think I mentioned that before, but the packaging is really nice and colorful. Let's go ahead and open this one as well. All right, and let's go ahead and pull it out. Oh, here we go. Looks like we got Vegeta this time. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him. Very reflective. It's kind of hard to tell on camera. You kind of get a kind of can see the reflectivity at the top right there. But everything's kind of like hard to kind of tell on here, but it looks really nice in person. The art's really good too. Let's go ahead and zoom in on his face. Really cool. Yeah, it's from the Broly movie. Go ahead and zoom out again. And now we can see both of them at the same time. Very nice art, I like it a lot. What do you guys think? I think that the uh, art that I undid before is uh, probably lower quality than this. This is nice and kind of made of a, like a plastic backing so it'll stay good for longer rather than just being made out of paper. And I really like Dragon Ball Z, I have since I was a kid. What kind of anime shows do you like or classic animes? Let me know in the comments below. But uh, yeah. And today we're gonna be looking at something really interesting. And it's kind of funny because it reminds me of something I used to do as a kid. We'll get to that in a minute. This is a crispy ramen snack. And it's garlic flavor and it's by Baby Star. I found this at uh, Motokai or Tokyo Central. And then uh, on the back right here, it says, no need to cook, ready to eat. And from what I said at the, be at the beginning is, it reminds me of the end of the already done ramen packs where you take it out and then you kind of sprinkle some of the seasoning on it or you just eat it hard by itself. Except it's packaged as an actual snack. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the nutritional information real quick. It's probably not great, but we have 530 milligrams of sodium in the entire thing and about 45 carbohydrates as well. Little to no actual sugar. And the fat is on the higher end. Has a very cute little design on the front. Looks like she has a magic wand. But without further ado, let's open this guy up and see what this tastes like. I wonder if it just tastes like kind of ramen noodles covered in flavoring. Let's go ahead and try it. So, this is what the inside of the packaging looks like. Let's go ahead and pour some out on my hand. And zoom in on it. So this is what they look like. Kind of, uh, just like a bit of crispy ramen. It's like it's set on the front. Yeah, feels just like the same consistency too. Let's go ahead and try this out. So, I would say that this is a little softer, or maybe the noodles are slightly thinner than actual like ramen ramen. What would be really interesting for me is if you got some of this and instead of eating it as a crispy ramen snack, you tried actually boiling it and seeing whether or not you could get it to taste like actual ramen. Kind of see if it's made of exactly the same thing. What do you guys think? Would you try that out? Try to make your own homemade cup of noodles or something like that. But it's really interesting. I've never seen something so based on what we all kind of know that we do. Um, you know, when you 
try to end little little bits of the ramen at the end. We all know we do that, but we never thought an actual snack would be made out of it. Pretty cool stuff. Really enjoyed it. The garlic flavor is there. Not too much of a powder on it. It's just already in there, so it's not going to be super messy. And I don't really have anything on my hand either. But yeah. And today we're actually looking at something my fiancé suggested to me. These are a Japanese candy, and they're actually tiny little shaped sugar balls in a nice little tiny kind of uh, traditional looking bag. And if we turn it around, we can see quite a few of these guys in here. We have a white one and a yellow one, and we have some greens as well and some pinks. And I'm wondering if there's any difference in flavor on that or if they're all just the same. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this nutritional information, though I'm sure that there's a lot of sugar. So, actually, not too much. Serving size 10 has 10 carbohydrates and 10 grams of sugar. No fat, saturated fat, or anything like that. And no sodium as well. It's basically just carbs. And it says ingredients, sugar, FDNC red, number three, FDNC, yellow number five, FDNC blue, number one, and water. So my original, you know, what I said is true. It's just clumped up sugar. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this thing because I'm really interested to kind of see what these taste like. All right, with a little bit of trial and error, I was able to uh, open this up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and try one of these out. So first, let's go ahead and try the white one. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it real quick, because these are really interestingly shaped. Pardon my fingers. Like I said, I've been working in my garage, so not much I can do about that right now. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and try it out. Hmm. This tastes exactly like uh, traditional rock candy. 100%. It's really good and very flavorful. Let's go ahead and try one of these other colors. Oh, actually, there was a random green in here. Let's zoom in on that. I thought they were all yellow, but there's a green. So what I presumed was correct. These are all of the same flavor. One of them are, well, a few of them are just colored with some food coloring, but all of them taste really good. That nice kind of crunchy sweetness. It is, uh, it is definitely a sugary snack, but it just reminds me of uh, my childhood with those kind of um, on the kind of stick, kind of like a lollipop, except the uh, rock candy at the end. But I really did like these, and I think that they are very elegantly packaged, too. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Have you ever tried rock candy? Something that you would like to try, or do you think it's just too much sugar? Let me know in the comments below. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.